after the first leg in Italy, our Europa League tie against Roma is finally poised at 2-2. Today, one of us will advance to the last eight in the Europa League. The other will be knocked out in the round of 16. Hello everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to our My Player Career Mode. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. Hope you are doing fantastic, having an awesome day and all of that good stuff. And I thank you for the incredible support that you are showing this series. The standings right now in terms of our league position in La Liga look like this. We are into the top four. Sevilla just behind us though on 56. Barcelona with us as well on 57. Betis down on 50 points. We do have league action as well as Europa League action today, which is up against firstly Hetafe away. Then we have the all important second leg against Roma before we take on Las Palmas as well. And with us wanting Europa League at the end of this season to win it, we need to try and get through Roma. Difficult opponents though. You saw last episode, Dybala gave them a 2-0 lead, but we fought back well to draw the game 2-2. I've already done a bit of training as well to make sure I'm in the starting 11. We do have some new investments that we could put our money into. You can see I've got some returning as well, uh, but no decisions, no shopping to do. So let's get ourselves into the first match of today as we take on Hetafe away. And they're on 42 points. Where are they in the league, actually? Let me have a look at that real quick. They are eighth. So this won't be an easy game here. And Sevilla and Barcelona have just played. Sevilla have now jumped to fourth with their victory. Barca winning as well. So we really have to make sure we keep pace with those two. Need to win this one against Hetafe. Let's take a look at the two lineups. Before we get into game, there they are on your screen. Little bit of fitness issues for a number of the Villarreal players, though. Which isn't great ahead of that Roma game. Ball forward from Hetafe. The flick on's there as well. And it is a goal for the home side. That came from a free kick on the halfway line. The ball went forward. The flick on was won. Nobody picking up any really of the Hetafe players. There was a couple in there who were unmarked. It falls into the box and you can see here, Ruli, the shot is straight at him, but he can't hold it. Wow. I don't know how they created that chance, but it was well worked. And it is the opening goal of the game. Iglesias with the ball forwards. Troyore is there to win the header. Now Paulinho back to the goal scorer. Arambari looking for another one. He's found the pass off. They've hit the inside of the post. It's gone out. I thought that might just sneak its way in after cannoning back off the inside. Bang. And then for us, luckily, it bounces out of play for a Villarreal goal kick. But right now, we are slightly fortunate. The score is not 2-0. Kabako looking for the ball forwards. Cut out by Milenkovic. Good interception. Now Marino. Milenkovic forward to myself. Off to Nunez. Nunez to Cramrich. He's in. Cramrich needs to make this count and he will certainly make it count for Villarreal and that's better from us. Cramrich with the finish but Milenkovic did ever so well there to intercept when the ball went forwards and then it was the time to be able to break. A few passes later, Cramrich is through. Doesn't miss the finish as we walk through some boxes. Well, I don't know what's going on there but even so, I do know what's going on with the scoreline and it is 1-1 one, one here. Finally, something for Villarreal to be happy about. Cramrich, Nunez, out wide looking for me on the right-hand side. The ball from Nunez will reach me. And now there's a chance to put a cross back into the middle. It's swung in, looking for Cramrich. Away by Hatafe, but not fully away just yet as we are challenging for the header. And in the end, we have come away with possession here. I'm not quite sure how it's worked out like that. But we are into the penalty area as well, going back across goal off the bar. Oh, that was the chance for 2-1. It was the chance for 2-1, but it's not gone our way, unfortunately. Petzala's ball forward. Traore's in here. Traore selflessly across to Paulinho, and he won't miss it. Hetafe get their noses back in front. And it was another well-crafted move from the home side. Brilliant work from Traore, selflessly across. And then Paulinho smashes home. 2-1 here. And Villarreal have switched to a 4-3-3 with Kramaric dropping back into midfield. But I imagine with that goal going in, they will go back to their usual 4-4-2 and have us and Danjuma push 
to make it really a 4-2-4 to try and get a chance. Danny Pareo has just come on as well for Coquelin to try and create some inspiration. But as things stand, a highlighted Sevilla and Barcelona winning. Well, we are not here and we won't be keeping pace with the two of them. Pena down the right. We need two goals really here. Pena's got an opportunity to put the ball into the box. He finds me as well. The control, the finish. There is the goal we were searching for. Can we pick up the ball, please? We need to go again. Why is it not letting me pick up the ball? It always does this, and I don't know why. Anyway, what a goal this is. Pena's delivery, chested down, volleyed home. And it is 2-2. Straight away as we were back behind, we are back on level terms. Nunez, Cramrich, it's absolutely brilliant. There's Villarreal back with the lead for the first time. I don't know why I said back with the lead. We haven't had the lead at all in the game. But finally, a nice move to take the lead. Cramrich, first time finish after being found by Nunez. And you'll wonder why I'm on the uh, left-hand side there. This came following a corner and I just happened to be over on the left side of the pitch. And I hadn't worked my way back over to the right side yet. Apologies as well if you just heard my watch beep. But 3-2 Villarreal. And it looks like we've done enough here to pick up the points. Marino into the feet of Parejo. Now to Cramrich. Cramrich to Mandy. Mandy's got me down the line. We are over the time here that the referee was planning on playing. Ball into the box. Looking for Dan Juma who gets there. And David Soria makes the save to stop Villarreal finding a fourth before the end of the game. But this will my friends, be the end of the game. It's Melisar on for Kiko Firmina. Last chance then. Dan Juma's corner sent into the near post. Away by Milia. Can we get the flick back? No, we can't. I was going to try and flick it over my head and then volley it goalwards. But full time, 3-2. Close game. But we got the job done in the end. And now that leads us into Roma at the Estadio de la Ceramica. Man of the match picked up. Two manager objectives as well. And not for the first time this season, we had our say on the game. Cramrich with a brace, though. And we got the winning goal scored. It wasn't me, it was Cramrich. But I'll take the three points for the Maverick tree then. And we've got the investments that have returned. So I can go ahead and see. We made some money in the microfinance. And the other ones have not returned yet, I don't think. So we'll have to wait for those. But you've seen the graphics change. You know what that means. It, of course, means it's time for the most important game of the episode as we advance the days to it. Some international friendlies coming up with England as well, but they will be not today's episode. So we haven't got to worry about them too much. There we are. Two lineups on screen. For Roma, Dybala, Belotti, Horta. So Tammy Abraham not starting the game here. Musiala, Cristante, Sao, Karsdorp in the midfield. Garcia, Ibanez, Conza and Lafont. I highlighted the fact that we were a little bit unfit in the last game. Still the case here, but we got the job done there. We need to do the exact same in Spain. Nunez, ball out wide, will find me here. And I'm waiting to see who's in the box. At the moment, there is no one, so we will hold on to this. Finding Cramrich. Cramrich, Marino, Nunez off the post. That was almost the best possible start. Villarreal could have hoped for. Nunez, effort, back off the woodwork. But it's a great start and we need to try and keep the momentum here. And if there is any place for us to advance in the Europa League, it's in front of our home fans. As Cramrich's effort blocked by Lafont. And 10 minutes in, already two moments for Villarreal. And Roma have not started strongly at all. They've given the ball away a couple of times now. And Cristante's in quickly in my first touch. Just couldn't get the ball out of my feet quick enough before he was on with the challenge. But it is a great, great start from the home side here. Ball over the top. Musiala giving chase to this for Roma. Mandy gets there first, though. Handball, says the referee, which will lead to a Roma free kick. Ibala takes into the box. Flicked on! Musiala's there! No offside flag! Roma lead! Spoke about our lightning fast start. Well, how about this from Roma? They win the flick on. It's the second ball again. We saw it in the game against Hitafe. The free kick into the box. They win the flick on. Nobody fights for that second ball. It's happened again here. Dybala, flick on by Cristante. Nobody marking Musiala. And he's there to then just head home. We did not learn from the game against Hitafe. It's really smart 
from Musiala as he almost looks at, at the position of Rudy and then heads it the other side. But Villarreal again, defensive frailties coming to fruition. Still a long way to go here though, but we need to try and get back if we can right now. Nunez again, it's the post. He's offside anyway, it wouldn't have counted. But for the second time tonight, even if he was offside, Nunez effort back off the post. Porter's ball, Dybala, this is dangerous! We've already done it once, from 2-0 down to 2-2. But can we do it again? Because you're going to have to. Paolo Dybala makes it 2. We talk about the top level of football. We say you can't make mistakes. And the problem right now that Villarreal are facing is they're making too many in the defence. Not picking up runners, not marking players, not fighting for the second ball. It's been two shots for Roma, two goals. When you play at this level, teams are clinical. They take their chances. Half time here at the Estadio de la Ceramica. Started the game strongly. Nunez at the post. Then we had another chance. But two Roma chances later. The scoreline is Roma 2. Villarreal 0. 4-2 on aggregate. And as things stand, the Europa League dream ends tonight. Porter, Bellotti, back heel, Dybala's in. It's game. It's game. Roma 3, Villarreal 0. Dybala, four goals across the two legs. It's honestly just the defensive frailties of Villarreal. There was an update recently. And I don't know if that's changed the way that AI plays a little bit. But it just feels like we're just not picking up players. We're not marking simple, basic football stuff going on that we're getting wrong. And that's why we're 3-0 down and crashing out of the Europa League. Dybala again. Just so much space for him to find the pass. Four shots, four goals. And this has got nothing to do with... The attack of Villarreal tonight. Yes, we've not created enough to warrant us going through. But look at the space that Roma have. Is it we're just so confused by the formation of Roma and the fact that they change positions a lot? Because I don't know. There's just no shape whatsoever. There's no chance now. Absolutely no chance we come back from this. Just the single minute added on here at the Estadio de la Ceramica. And what started... As Europa League dreams have become Europa League nightmares. Roma deserving of their spot in the last eight. We crash out tonight off the back of a dismal display. Questions going on in the dressing room to find out what happened there tonight. I don't really know either. Level 27 picked up. Four points to add to our skill tree. 6-2 aggregate scoreline for Roma as they advance through Juventus as well. Bill Bow still in the competition. Atalanta getting through against West Ham. Spurs advance against Marseille. Leverkusen advance against Porto. Galatasaray through against Antwerp. And PSV through against Young Boys. We do need to strengthen because there's a couple of positions that we failed to strengthen when we lost players in the positions. Of course, we lost Hernandez to Man United. We weren't able to pick up a new centre-back in the window. We don't have a left-back. At the moment, Peña is playing on the right and Firmina is playing on the left. So we don't actually have an out-and-out left-back. And we also lost Saniolo as well. We don't know where he's gone yet, though. I can't find the team that he has joined at the moment. So a lot to do in the window. And hopefully we'll do it and then look ahead to next season and Europe next year. As we enter this match here, I mean, look at my stamina. I'm not going to be able to play all the game here. But anyway, Las Palmas at home. Need a win. Cramrich playing it out wide to me. Waiting for the overlap of Peña. That creates space for us to drive into. And then look to play elsewhere. As I'm trying to release this pass. And eventually I will manage to get the ball off to Kiko Firmina. Now Nunez. Cramrich going for goal. Bottom corner. Villarreal have taken the lead. But it's taken 20 minutes. And in this opening 20 minutes we've not dominated the game. As we would have been hoping to. I think that result against Roma has somewhat kind of knocked the wind out of our sails, if you will. I've used that analogy before, but yeah, it really does feel a bit flat from us in this first 20 minutes. 
Benito, Las Palmas coming forward. Vieira, Fabio Silva, really with a stop. And after our goal in 20 minutes, Las Palmas has spent a lot of time in our half. And it is a corner ball sent in right at the end of the first half. Flicked on. Cramrich positioned to be able to clear it away, though. Benito wins it. Still not done here just yet. Benito's effort straight at Rooney. Half time, 1 0. But not a lot to shout about from the home side. Marino's header forwards does find me. The challenge coming in. Nowhere near winning the ball. Nunez waiting in the middle. See the pass. Nunez goes to the overhead kick and he nearly finds it. Vales with a touch to stop the ball from going in the bottom corner. I think it's clear to see as the Villas ball to Nunez. Now Danjuma. Danjuma, have we got a chance here? He's done really well. But then as he looked for the pass, Rosero got over importantly for Las Palmas to make the interception. But yeah, it's clear to see the sale of Hernandez. And Zaniolo has affected us. They would have been key players in that Roma tie. And we just don't really look the same without them at the moment. But I'm sure ahead of next season, when the team gels, Nunez gets his first full season under his belt. And we go into the transfer window and make a couple of new signings. We will be a force next year. Full time here though. Villarreal 1, Las Palmas 0. It was a flat performance. And I'm putting that down to the disappointment against Roma. But victory is victory. Before we go today, we will play one of our international friendlies. This one is up against Croatia. And we are on to replace Bowen in the 56th minute. The score 1-0 after Sancho has opened up the scoring. Even after coming on off the bench, I'm still the lowest stamina in the game. Um, we have been working our socks off recently at Villarreal. So we will only play... Well, a half here, so that should allow us to gain some stamina back come the end of the match. But we are on here. Let's see what we can do in the final game of today's episode. Kovacic, stones in the way of the pass. Ward Prowse composing these areas. Can find the ball to Sancho as well. Jaden Sancho finds Harry Kane. Let's see what we can do with England. Kane's ball. It's a brilliant pick out here to us on this right side. And now then, what are we going to be able to do as he cut back on the left foot and still going? And still going. Can we find the right pass here, though? That is the question that we need to look at. And in the end, I'm going to have to go back out to the right side. wan -Bissaka, Sancho, Jones. Jones finds me. Curling! Oh, well then. England 2, Croatia 0. And this one is a really good finish. It took us a long time to find the chance, though. Did you see how far I came into the middle of the pitch before I was able to actually find an opening? And then when we do... It's all about keeping our composure and then curling it into that corner. England corner. It will be War Prowse to deliver. Such a good dead ball specialist as Rhys James powers his header goalwards. And in the end, it's kept out by Croatia. Nearly England's third. Ball back into the box. Sosa heads it away. Jones for England keeps it. Now back to Jones. Through to Sancho. Sancho to Kane. 3 0 England. Effortless moves on show. Henderson, Kane, Rice, Jones, Rice for four. Offside flag's gone up, won't count. Declan Rice celebrating, he hasn't seen yet. Still hasn't seen and there you go. Now he notices the offside flag is up and it is not England's fourth. Sancho battling away and doing so well. Jones finding me. Tell you what, it's four for England. But all I had to do was finish it off because all the hard work was done by Jaden Sancho. Picks the pocket from Croatia's defender and then finds Jones, lays it on a plate. As we are celebrating inside the stadium, fans oblivious to this, in fact. They don't know there's a few England players there next to them as they're jumping up and down. What's going on there then? But you can see great work from Sancho, wins it back. Jones finds me, second goal of the game for us. Not going to miss that from that position, am I? Mayer on the edge of the area, looking for Croatia's shot. There's the lovely ball from Kramaric, and Kovacic will find their consolation. 4-1, no clean sheet for England. It's good work from Mayer, just holding onto the ball. Then the ball into Kramaric, first time round the corner. He's good in those positions, we've seen him do that for Villarreal. Just find that little pass that he needs to find to create the chance. But in the end, it's England 4, Croatia 1 in the final game of today's episode, in which... You all know what happened earlier. As I said in that uh, little 
Ending of the game, Europa League dreams to Europa League nightmares was what happened. So, our journey in Europe has come to a close, but we can still fight for more European football next season. And my friends, that will be the end of the episode. We'll take a look before we go at the standings, not of the international friendlies, because we don't really need to worry about that. So, here is the standings following that 1-0 win against Las Palmas. We do climb back to fourth, but you can see everything we do Barca and Sevilla are pretty much following on. Atletico have opened up a gap to Real Madrid. Seven points clear now at the top of the table. They were once on the exact same points, but no longer. And Atletico are heading towards a title for themselves. Bilbao into sixth. Betis down in seventh. Those two fighting it out for the Conference League, it looks like, ahead of next season. We have unlocked a new perk as well, which is Hot Streak. It boosts your shooting attributes after you score a goal for 15 minutes. But I'm going to... Go with Pinpoint Cross, Team Press and Poacher still until I get Tireless Runner and Set Peak Specialist. As for the player growth, four points to use. Not use them yet though. And there are our attributes, personality points on screen as well. And I think that is all I have to show you for today. But we'll be back with another episode very, very soon. Let's aim for 900 likes again today. That would be absolutely amazing. And I'm sure that all of you lovely people will achieve that like target because you are all legends. Until next time, stay safe, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Look after each other. And I will catch you all again in the next episode. Adios.